All right, guys, so this was a broadhead that was asked for a ton. That is the Swacker Levi Morgan Signature Series. Don't, not no, yet, man. not yet, Moose. So that was the Swacker Levi Morgan Edition. We have it, and we're going to test it today. Stay tuned. All right, so this one right here is number 269. It's 125 grain. I got the two and a half inch cut. And now this comes in two inch cut and two and a half. And I know all y'all love them giant cuts. So I figured we'll start with the two and a half and then we'll get the two inch when I can afford to buy them to test them. And uh, you can see here, this comes with a Swacker reusable case, three broadheads, six replacement bands and 12 hunt ready plugs and a little screwdriver. So you have everything you need to hunt right there uh if you want to check these out i got a link to the amazon link where i i purchased them and uh it's a really good deal i mean everything I, I try to find the cheapest prices for the broadheads on amazon this one had a good deal now if you don't know swacker uh these are designed to when they puncture the cut one is the wing blades which it says right on here it says slice twice i'll just read it the wing blades rip through the hide and punch through the first set of ribs. Then the other blades, or they call them the virgin blades, unfold inside the body cavity, allowing the razor sharp edges to slice through the internal organs. So essentially, that two and a half inch cut is not going to be until it's vital, which is good. These, these back cut, single bevel wing tips that how the broadhead sits which i'll get it out in a second so you can see it but that is how it's going to punch through and that's going to give you a good enough entrance and you should get a big hole on the exit but we'll see two and a half inch cuts a huge cut so you got a bone crushing high carbon steel point you got razor sharp 32 thou thick stainless blades seems like that's everybody anti-deflectant design allows for a quarter inch shots we should shoot the gel on like a heavy quarter angle and see if it actually deploys. Because it this broadhead will deploy in gel. So super strong anodized aircraft al aluminum. Aluminium aluminum. So we got, let's get this out and let's look at it. It is cool that they actually give you a broadhead case. That's pretty sweet. Because I know, well most people don't have as many broadheads as what I have. But uh it gets old when you're you know you're stuck with thousands of these different broadheads that you've just bought literally to test for you guys never had any intention to hunt with half of these but this is pretty sweet i like this this is a very i thank you swacker for this little box let's so this broadhead right here like i was saying the single bevel wing tips that's your first cut and that's going to follow right after this high carbon. This is just designed to punch. This part of it is just to punch a hole and get in there and let the blades do work. Now, as they get in, these will catch. Blades will deploy. Okay, so that's how after it punches and it pops out, you got... And I do know they put this curve down there to increase penetration, reduce resistance. But that two and a half inch cut's huge. And you can see the way their design is, it's a lot like a Grim Reaper. The distance from the tip to these blades, so on a quarter inch shot, it allows the tip to punch. It's almost like when you're machining, the center drill allows the drill to follow that hole. This is the same concept. It's going to hit, this will catch, and then deploy the blades, keeping it on, on target. No deflection. Which we can test that. But... You can see, I mean, that's a huge cut, and uh, these are a lot sharper than the nap. They're not extremely sharp, though I'm not sitting here, don't thumb broadheads, but it's, it's sharp, but not that sharp. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to take, and we'll weigh all three, and we'll see. The one will not have the O-ring on it. So the first one is right at 124, so minus one. Second one is 124 on the money, so minus one again, but if they're all 124, who cares? 
And then I actually think with the O-ring, that'll be there. That's 123.8. Oh, yeah. So with the O-ring, all, th all three of these sit right at 124. So, yes, that is less than what it should be. But, I mean, can you really complain? You got three broadheads, and it's they're all the same weight. Uh, so I can't complain there. But what we're going to do now is we have something new for the test. We still have our gel so we can check and view the wound channel. Oh shoot, first things first. I gotta weigh that arrow. Okay, so the arrow I'm gonna use for the test, there it is right there, this is on the end of it. It is a very long broadhead. All right, so the arrow I'm gonna be using, that's how it looks on there. Uh, they're pretty slick. They're a really long broadhead, but they kinda have to be for how they work. But the bow I'm using is just a halon. Uh, it's just a halon. Well, it is just a halon. With 27-inch draw length, 72-pound draw, so just a very common uh, weight and draw. We have just your common arrow here, an Exodus MMT 300 spine. Uh, no FOC bonus, no boost, no nothing. But I did take the fletchings that they put on off because they just did not fly with fixed heads. And I fletched it my way, and you can see, I, you know, bear shaft tune, and then knock tune, and then I got everything marked how I need to knock the arrow for it to fly perfect. But what we got for a weight, keep in mind this is a 124 grain head, so that is going to be a little heavier than what we're used to. So we're sitting at 505.4 for this one, so I'm just making note of that one. That'll be a pretty good weight for this. I'm very curious to see how this does. And like I said, we will have our gel. They were out of whitetail shoulder blades, so I have a elk shoulder blade instead, which this sucker is ginormous. Hopefully we can put two different broadheads through this and uh, test them effectively for both shots. But we'll see how that goes. We have two of these, and we got four broadheads to test today. Uh, so we'll see. But this sucker right here is, man, if it hits any of this, it's going to be in for a fun ride. That is quite the shoulder blade. So let's get down there, let's get after it, and let's see what this swacker, 2.5 inch Levi Morgan edition, does through the shoulder blade and into the gel. Stay tuned. All right, so we got the swacker on there. It's windy out here today, so we are not going to be flying the drone on the side. Uh, we are just going to have the look straight on because with this much wind, it's going to sway and it's not going to really give us a good look in slow-mo on the side anyways. So we're 20 yards. We got an elk shoulder blade up there. And uh, we got the chrono set up in, in the form of the Garmin. The old Garmin. I'm going to aim a little bit lower on that elk shoulder blade. I'm going to hopefully let this wind gust go by because... It's messing with my shooting. I need to start shooting badly because I'm not as steady as I usually am. Oh. But as soon as this gust goes by, we're going to bust that shoulder blade and put the old schwacker in the gel. I'm going to actually step right here because that block's crooked. Good? Yep. Perfect. I pulled the trigger on that one hard. I'm surprised it shot right. Yeah, I know. I, I, I yanked. All right, so I'm shocked that actually hit where it was. I know I'll get flacked in the comments. Guard can't even shoot a bow. I yanked so hard on that trigger, it was nuts. But it hit right where I was aiming. So that's on the Halon for forgiveness on that one. That's kind of important. Once again, why we do not do accuracy uh, broadhead testing because it's not accurate testing because it's we're humans. But we got the speeds of 251.1 and then 70.7 kinetic foot pounds of energy so that's pretty good for that bow and that arrow setup. all right so you can see here in this wound channel now keep in mind i'm not going to get a, amazing penetration with a two and a half inch broadhead going through an elk shoulder blade with this arrow and bow setup i know that so i'm not going to bash a broadhead for not giving insane penetration what i will say is this broadhead did exactly what it's supposed to do in the form of okay so the first cut went right through the elk shoulder blade with the wing tips and then still 
didn't deploy, let get through there, and then you can see the delay. That is built in. That is what Swacker does. So that is by design. So yes, I only got, you know, four inches of that two and a half inch cut, but this broadhead doesn't fit this setup that great. And it still performed flawlessly by design. So as you can see here on the shoulder blade, the wing hooks did what they did. They busted the bone to clear a space to keep it on path. Now that's, that you can't really complain on that. Then the entrance cut, your entrance cut on a swacker is gonna be slightly less than what you're expecting, but that's by design again. So you can see there, the wing, wing hooks did what they're supposed to and cut, and then you get that big wound channel once it opens up. Now, this Levi swacker, I wouldn't shoot with this kind of bow setup. Uh, I wouldn't shoot two and a half inches unless you're maybe crossbow or uh, you know a, a faster bow with a little bit more FOC to help push it. The two inch is what I'm getting next with them. And I think that's gonna be a really good broadhead for a lot of people's setups. Because guys, two and a half inches is a massive cut. That's cool, it's massive. A two inch broadhead that does what this broadhead does would be extremely lethal in every single bow setup. But I will say this too, even, even the wingtips, the tip is completely fine from punching through. The wing tips or wing hooks, whatever you want to call them, they're completely fine as well from punching through. And the blades are perfect because they didn't deploy literally because of their design. So this swacker, this sucker right here, I mean, you could probably touch these up. It looks like you can replace the blades if you needed, but... That sucker right there could kill you a deer and keep on trucking. That did very well in that test. I I just don't think the two and a half inch cut, that's way too much cut for that bow, that speed. I mean, you're shooting, what was it, 251 or something? Yeah, 251. That's way too slow for that big of a cut with no FOC and no nothing. So, But the broadhead performed great based on its design. And I'm pretty eager to, to get that two inch and put them side by side. I'll have to look and see if this broadhead can be used with crossbows. Because if it can, we could test it in Hawk's crossbow and see how deep you could get with penetration. Pretty sweet little broadhead right there. Just too big of a cut for that setup. I'd be curious to try this again in my Tri-X. I think, I think that would be perfect. But guys, as always, smash the thumbs up button for your boys. Drop your comments below. Let us know what swacker you'd like to see us test let us know what swacker you use and if you're a fan of the elk shoulder blade versus the whitetail shoulder blade let us know but i mean this thing that swacker did did damage and it didn't really even mess with it <laughs> this the whitetail shoulder blade would have been blown up by now but oh yeah but if i can get these i'll get these if i, I hope i can get more whitetail shoulder blades to put in front of this gel and really test broadheads out we got a lot more to film today, so as always, make sure to smash the thumbs up button, drop your comments below, subscribe if you haven't, share these videos. If you don't like ballistics gel, don't watch. Simple concept. Try it out. It's awesome. If you understand how to utilize common sense and analyze our tests, you will find value on different broadheads in our tests. It has worked 100% for Moose, me, and Hawk afield based on what we see here, and it directly translates the field. So it clearly works. Guys, check us out on Rumble. Website down below. Amazon affiliate link in the description. Pick up some swackers, some Levi Morgans. I'll put the 2-inch and 2.5-inch. And, and I can't wait to get those 2-inch to test them out. I think they'd be the perfect broadhead for that bow setup. But that's enough. Guys, Jake Sleeves and Blue Collar Outdoors. We will indeed catch you on Rumble, YouTube, and on the next video. Toodaloo.